Welcome back to the Bailey Corner. In this week's episode, I'm going to show you guys the secrets to Corey Duel's soft break. Now we've had over 1,000 subscribers since the last video, and I just want to thank everyone for supporting this channel. Let's go ahead and get to it. Corey Duel's soft break relies on four key principles. A consistent rack, making the wing ball, controlling the one ball, and controlling the cue ball. Let's go and talk about the first key principle, a consistent rack. You can actually attain a very consistent rack just by using a magic rack like this. This is basically a template that's going to allow you to have a very tight rack every single time. Now if you don't have this and the tournaments require you to use a triangle, the triangle is going to work but it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Basically you're just going to have to be a little bit more careful and make sure there are absolutely no gaps in the rack. You also want to make sure the one is exactly on the spot and exactly lined up on the center. If the rack is a little bit crooked or a little bit off or you have any gaps, the wing ball is not going to go in. The second key principle is making the wing ball. If you're breaking from the right side, you're going to want this four ball to go into that corner pocket. Now if you're breaking on the left side, you're going to want the five ball to go into this corner pocket. You could go either side and the soft break will still work. As far as cue ball placement, I tend to line up from this diamond and this diamond and place it relatively right around here. Same thing from the other side, I'm just lining up these diamonds. You can have a little bit of variance and you'll still be able to achieve the soft break. But I found it very difficult to make the wing ball when the cue ball is around the center. So I always place it right around here. And this is what Core Duel does too. If you want to make this wing ball go in every single time, you actually want to hit the one ball as square as possible, just like this. Now if you hit the one ball a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, you're not going to be able to control the cue ball and the one ball as easily. Also, the wing ball may not go in every single time. Again, you want to be as consistent as possible when performing the soft break. To practice this, I actually remove all the balls and just leave the one ball on the spot. This just allows me to sight the one ball a little bit easier and practice for the soft break. Now when I hit this, again, I want to be as square as possible and actually hit this with a little bit of draw to bring the cue ball just around here. And this is just really good practice for the soft break. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. Again, as square as possible with slight draw. You see, I stopped it right around here. If you drew it back a little bit, it's still okay. The third and fourth key principle is controlling the one ball and controlling the cue ball. When you hit this one ball as square as possible, what's gonna happen is this one ball is gonna tend to hover around this side pocket. And this cue ball, since you put a slight draw on it, you're gonna tend to put the cue ball right around this area. Now this is gonna make an easy one ball on the side pocket. And because you hit it square, this wing ball is gonna fly in every single time. Now you wanna make sure you have very good speed control. If you hit a little bit too hard, the one ball may end up in this area and it's gonna be a lot more difficult to run out than as if it was on the side pocket like that. Let me go and show you a couple examples. I'm gonna place the cue ball right around here in between this diamond and this diamond. I'm gonna to try to hit the one ball as square as possible with slight draw to place the cue ball right around here. This will cause the four ball to go into the corner pocket and the one ball to hover around the side pocket for an easy run out. Now if I hit a little bit too hard, the one ball will drift around here. But if I'm able to control the cue ball around the center, I should still have a relatively easy run out. Let's go and give this a go. And as you can see, I perform an almost near perfect soft break. The wing ball went right in, I was able to control the cue ball right around here, and I was able to control the one ball for the side pocket. Let me go and show you a couple of clips of Corey Duel doing it. You'll see that Corey does the same exact thing for a soft break, but obviously he's gonna be a lot better than me. I mean, he's a professional. Five, six, seven, eight. The only I rule is you gotta either get four balls to a rail or you gotta pocket, pocket ball. something. Five in the corner, one towards the side. Every time, every time the same thing and the one on the side. This time he does keep the one over the side pocket. When I was a kid, I was always, you know, my, my goal in pool was I wanted to try and be able to run out every time or perfect the game, you know. I wanted to try and, like, my goal wasn't to win tournaments, it was to try and be perfect, you know. Yeah. Now you can see how dangerous a soft break can really be due to its predictability. I mean, the wing ball goes in every single time, the one ball hovers around the side pocket, and we're able to control the cue ball right around the center of the table. If you combine this with pattern racking, which is not legal by the way, nine ball becomes a broken game. This is why I was so fascinated with Corey Duel's soft break. I mean, Corey Duel quite literally broke the game and he found a way to play perfect pool. 
I think that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more pool related content in the future. We've had insane growth over the last month, over 1,000 subscribers. And I just want to thank everybody for watching. I'll see you guys next time.